Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. My name's Cody. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we have a settlement problem, and in particular, we're going to be talking about uh, Schmertman's method. Here's what the question says. Using Schmertman's method and the information below, which of the following most closely resembles the settlement of the foundation below at year 10? Uh, the correction factor for strain relief is 0 0.35. A 1.25 kips per foot force is applied along a, the continuous foundation. Uh, the foundation is 50 foot long. Then we see our diagram there. We see our table that we're given. And then we see our four options there available to us in inches. So that's going to be our settlement in inches. Um, so let's go ahead and fire this guy up. The first step is finding some reading material. Uh, we're going to be looking in the PE manual. So in the PE manual, uh, we're going to be on page 104 slash 105. And uh, we're going to be in section 3.5.3. If this is, uh, if you're watching this later on and they've changed the manual somehow, it, at the time of this uh, video, it is section 3.5.3. So. Uh, whenever you look on that, you're going to find a settlement formula, Schmertman's methods formula here. We have the initial settlement uh, is equal to C1 times C2 uh, times our pressure, delta P, that's a delta right there, this triangle. Uh, and then we have our sigma I equals 1 to H. And then we have delta H I. And then we see that delta H I is equal to H C uh, times I Z over X times E S. All right, a ton of material there. You need to know your units in this problem. C1 is your strain relief. C2 is your creep factor. P is your pressure. HC is your layer thickness, so that's how you know we see our depth there uh, available to us in that table. That's going to be our HC for each layer. IZ is your strain influence factor that's given to us. Uh, our elastic modulus that is also given to us. Our shape factor uh, we're going to have to solve for that later on. And matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, X is actually it could be 1.25 or 1.75 and the way that we know that is we need to find the relationship between the length of our foundation and the base of our foundation and there's a rule in there that says the length of your foundation over your base over the width of your foundation if that is greater than or equal to 10 uh, we're going to be in plane strain which means x equals 1.75 so do some quick math you'll see that uh, the length of our foundation is 50 feet long. The width of it's 5 feet long. 50 divided by 5, that's 10. That's greater than or equal to 10. So therefore, we're going to be use 1.75 as our shape factor for this one. So we need to use that number uh, to our advantage there. So let's go ahead and address the unknowns here. C1, what is that? Well, it's actually in the manual. It says that it has to be greater than... Uh, or equal to 0.5. This is a way that they're going to trip you up on the exam. They're going to give you something in the in the uh, in the problem statement that does not align with the formula. We need to figure that out. We need to identify that problem, and we need to follow the formula because it was designed based off of the uh, the units that are in the problem. So, or the units in the formula. So, with that said, uh, C1 is it has to be. 0.5 because it has to be greater than or equal to 0.5 it gives you 0.35 in the problem but we have to use at least 0.5 so that's what we're going to use here uh, c2 we see that there's a formula uh, it's 1 plus 0 0.2 log 10 uh, times your time in years which is 10 for us over 0.1 one well when you solve that guy out you should end up with 1.4 all right uh, so now we have c1 we have c2 now we need to solve for delta p delta p is going to be our 1.25 kips per foot that's given to us in the problem right here that's our force along our foundation over 
the uh, width of our foundation. So basically we, we need to figure out how is that force distributed. Well, it's distributed based off of the length. You can imagine that we have a force right here. It's being distributed along right there. So um, with that said, this guy actually ends up being 0 0.25 kips per foot but we need to keep in mind that we are in units of pounds. It's given to us in here. It's given to us here. Uh, we need to take our uh, we need to take our hints and and solve for this in pounds because it's going to be useful for us later down the road uh, to keep our units the same. So this is actually 250 pounds per square foot. I forgot that square foot. So now that we have all of our unknowns. We have our C1, we have our C2, we have our delta P. Uh, now we need to add all of our HIs up. We know what our HIs are, we know what our HCs are that's given to us in our table. Our IZ is given to us on our table. Our X is 1.75 and our ES is also given to us in our table. So now we just need to add up our HIs. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and solve for that first layer. So HI1 is equal to four feet. That's the layer thickness there, multiplied by our IZ, which is 0 0.2762 for that first layer. We're gonna put that over our shape factor, 1.75. And then we need to multiply our shape factor by our ES, our elastic modulus. This is 520 pounds per square foot. Close parentheses, close parentheses. This guy actually ends up being 0 0.0012 foot. Okay, not a lot, but it'll add up at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and skip forward. Now that you know the process, I'm gonna skip forward to the last layer. All right, and our last layer, HI5, this guy's gonna be equal to six foot in our layer thickness, uh, times 0 0.039 2 over 1.75 or shape factor again times our elastic modulus 2083 2083 pounds per square foot all right and when you solve that out you should end up with 0 0.00065 feet all right did you get all those answers uh, we're going to add that up. So when you sum all these guys up, you should end up with uh, 0 0.00327 foot or close to it. And uh, and we're going to plug that into our formula. Let's remember our formula is our C1 times C2 times delta P. We can scroll up and look at it real quick. Times delta P times the sum of our uh, layers there. So. Let's go ahead and plug and chug. We have everything that we need. SI is equal to 0 0.5. Remember, that's the minimum that the manual allows us to use for this formula uh, times 1.4. Remember, that's our C2 that we solved for times our, uh, times our pressure, which is 250 pounds per square foot. Remember, we solved that uh, based off of the force that it was given us and our width of our foundation. Uh, and then we multiply that by the sum of what we just found. So 0 0.00327 feet. All right, so when you do that, you end up with 0 0.57225 feet. But notice our answers are in inches. We're not in feet. So we need to multiply this by 12. And when you do that, you end up with 6.867 inches. And that is pretty close to seven inches. And when we scroll up, let's see what that one is. That looks like it's going to be B. So I hope this video helps and we'll catch you next time.